Scientific Illustrator Stephanie Rosso. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Blue Eyed Grass instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint the blue eyed grass by using Nature Sketch Creates step by step instructions. You can follow along with this lesson even if you don't have a lesson kit. You can help this tiny business by clicking that like button, subscribing to this YouTube channel, and shopping for lesson creates at naturesketchcreate.com. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you get started. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, relax, and don't get too caught up if you think you might have made a mistake. Let's get started. Step one, transfer the image to the watercolor paper. So you wanna tape the transfer image to the back of the watercolor paper, and you can do it on any side, but I find the top helps for positioning. And you don't wanna cover up any of the lines you plan on transferring. So if you plan on transferring the whole bunch of lines, you may want to put it on the side after all. Then take your graphite transfer paper and you want that the dark side down, light side up, and this can be used over and over. You see I used it for my step-by-step -step panda demonstration. And you'll place that on top of the watercolor paper. Gently press down on the transfer image and then just start anywhere you want and draw one line or a couple, the medium pressure, and then hold it down gently on one side and flip that up and see that it's transferring dark enough. So you want it dark enough that you can see the lines after you paint a few layers of paint the step-by-step -step painting. That way you can draw them after you're done painting with the Micron ink pens. So it could be a little lighter than that. It doesn't have to be quite that dark. So you want to go ahead and go over the lines. You can hold down one end gently to make sure your papers don't move around. Just trace right over those lines to transfer them. This is meant to be meditative and relaxing. So go ahead and put on a podcast, audiobook, some music, or transfer the lines outside and just listen to nature. And don't worry too much if you don't trace over them exactly. This is just a sketch and it will be imperfectly perfect. So just trace over those lines to transfer them. When you think you have all the lines transferred, you want to again hold down one corner gently and then flip the image up and down like a flip book to see if you've transferred all the lines. You can add in any that you have missed. And I usually start with my eyes on one part and then move my eyes through the image while I'm flipping the paper up and down. I always end up missing something. If you want to keep track of your lines a little bit better, you may want to try using colored fine tip pen or colored fine tip pencil. Then you can tell which lines you've transferred. The pencil line tends to blend in with the black line pretty well, making it hard to see. I'm going to go ahead and transfer the common name and scientific names. It's totally optional. And the common name, blue eyed grasses, a little bit bigger than my pencil tip, so I'm just drawing on the outside of that black line. Kind of an outline of the black. And in order to transfer the scientific name, which is italics underneath the common name, I'm just going to go ahead and write right over it since it's about the same size as my pencil tip. 
I'm gonna go ahead and remove the graphite transfer paper. And then I'm gonna remove the tape from the back of my watercolor paper. I'm gonna take the tape off. And since it didn't leave much paper residue, or looks like any paper residue, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this so I can use it again later. And I'm going to keep this transfer image too. It's gonna to help me at the end if I wanna redraw the lines and if I want to protect my image while I'm painting it, I can put it down so that I don't get any smudge marks from my hand just over different areas or maybe paint spatterings while I'm mixing. I'm gonna set that aside for now. We have our kneaded eraser. I'm gonna knead it to a light gray spot. And you will want to use a kneaded eraser instead of a regular eraser because a kneaded eraser is gentler on the watercolor paper, which is very fragile. And you want the watercolor paper to preserve its qualities. And you can do that by using this kneaded eraser to erase marks. And you can either use it to dab or rub. Dabbing will lighten the marks. Just make sure when, before you use it, you knead it to a light gray spot so it doesn't transfer any graphite to your image. It just takes it off. This paper came with a little spot in there, which is totally fine. These lines don't look too dark to me. I think this is ready for adding some paint. Step two, paint in the grass yellow and purple. So first you wanna mix the grass yellow, which is just gonna be the 1H Hansa Yellow Light. I'm not gonna need a lot, I'm just gonna take one drop. You can add two drops or whatever helps out or works best for you. And I'm not gonna add water to it, I'm just gonna kind of move it around in my palette. There'll be a tiny bit of water but I'm not gonna actually press the barrel of my brush. I just have a damp brush that I'm going to add that to that paint. I'm gonna dab it off onto my towel and test it out. And it's still a bit dark, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of water, but like a, probably a little tiny drop. So add that in. And if you have a regular paint brush, you can just add it by using a little water container next to your paint palette and dip your brush and add it to the palette. Test that out. That looks better. It's not quite as concentrated, but just slightly a little bit less. And I'm just going to add it here, like I see in step two's image, to the center of the flower. And then I'm going to add it in here as well. And if you get paint outside of the lines, that's totally fine. If you need a finer tip, just roll your tip on your towel. And I'm just adding this kind of like I would be with a pen or a marker or crayon, just moving that color through the space. The difference is, is you want to have one continuous line of color. So you want to start at one spot and just bring that all the way down in the space. I'm going to break it up from space to space. So one shape, I fill that in, and then I move on to the next. Bring the paint all the way down into the end of that shape. And at any time you can pick up more paint, dab it off on your towel and then continue. Go ahead and clean off my brush. I don't want that yellow to be there, so to wait till it's clear on my towel.
can fill up your water brush at any time. I used all the water in the barrel of this brush, cleaning it off. Looks good now. So next I'll mix the grass purple. So I'll take one drop of the 9H Cobalt Violet. It's a good idea to shake these paints up. Sometimes the pigment settles on the sides. That way you get the full concentration of the color. Drop in there. And with these lessons, I'm talking about being wet, talking about more water added to it in the palette versus dry having more pigment and less water. So that's all in the palette, so it makes a darker color when there's more pigment. When you add water to it in the palette, it'll dilute it, creating a lighter color. We're gonna create a super dark, medium dark, and a lighter color. Clean off the brush. I'll test that out and see if it's dark enough or dry enough, have enough pigment to it. That looks good. Pick it up again and I want to find tips so again I'm going to roll that on my towel and then I'm just going to apply it onto these lines of my flower. Again, don't worry too much about being exact. This is just a sketch. I'm going to clean off my brush. One thing to note, though, is that the sepals are a little bit wider than the petals. And I have these little lines because the petals are a little bit narrower than the petal lines. Then I'm going to go ahead and let this dry and move on to step three. Step three, paint in the grass green. So you want to go ahead and mix the grass green and it takes a lot of this hot to yellow light, 25 drops. One, two, three, four, five. 25. One drop the 28H Carmine. And one drop the Fallow Blue. Go ahead and mix that up. Dab it off onto my towel and test it out. Looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and test it up here. it up just a little bit more. Clean off my brush and I'm going to take the wettest, lightest version of this color. So I'm adding a lot of water to it in my palette. Test it out one more time. I'm going to add it to all the areas that are green in step three's image. So I'm going to try to preserve some of the yellow along the edges of all the areas on this plant. This green color. So we're kind of painting through the center of these stems here. And I'm dabbing this off onto my towel each time I pick up paint. I'm gonna make this line area wide enough, so I'm just going to add a little bit of paint there. I'll change it later with my ink lines in step seven. I'm going to add a little pencil line there too and create little light marks to guide me throughout the rest of the painting. I'm 
These little mistakes make everything perfectly imperfect. No reason to worry too much about them. It's just going to make this painting more unique and special to you. Let this dry and move on to step four. Step four, paint in the grass purple and brown. So take some of that grass purple. Again, it's the wettest, lightest color. Test it out to make sure it didn't dry up too much and become too concentrated. Looks pretty good. And I'm going to take that and just paint right over those petals. Since this other color underneath is a darker color, you can see it when you paint this lighter color over it. And you don't need to be exact. Just add it in. Again, I'm working with one area at a time and kind of moving that paint around into the next area. I'm not pressing on the barrel of my water brush at all. I really want to release paint onto my palette. I don't want to release it onto my watercolor paper. I pick up a little bit more because my paint started to look a little light. off my brush and I'm going to mix the grass brown which will be one drop of the 21H sepia and we're going to use both the driest darkest and the wettest lightest version of this color so I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit and move it to the side here some water and test it out that looks like the right amount of water added and so I'm going to clean up my brush again pick up a little bit dab it again and I'm going to just add it like I see in step four's image so plant here if you need a finer tip don't forget to roll the tip of your brush and don't worry about being exact so worry if you get any paint outside of the lines. This is just a sketch. And there is a little bit of brown in some of the green areas, so don't forget to add that in there too. And if you want to add a little bit more, feel free to do that. This is your painting and your sketch. Every time I paint, painting turns out just a little bit different based on my mood, maybe on the weather, what I was doing that day, how much energy I have. It's kind of a fun thing about painting and doing watercolors. I'm going to clean off my brush, pick up this darker color, now I want, I don't want to take out too much pigment by adding too much water. So I can test it out first and make sure it moves nicely on paper. And I feel like it's kind of catching on the paper a lot. So I just want to add just a tiny bit of water to that. Make a tiny little drop. And then when I test it, it should move smoothly. So that's moving much smoother. Dab that on to my towel after picking some up. And then I don't want too much water. This will dry quickly, so this should already be dry, since we're not adding too much water to our paper itself. And if you need to check that, just make sure you dab your finger instead of wiping it, because it's so wet, it will smear and smudge your painting if you wipe your finger over it. But if you dab, it'll just get paint on your finger. I think put the brown on this one, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is brown color. Just put the dark brown color over it. A little bit of dark brown there. Too. I'm going to clean off my brush, let this dry, and move on to step five. Step five, paint in the grass red violet. And 
Before I start that, quick tip, make sure you don't fill your water brush all the way up with water. And this will prevent from too much water coming out while you're painting, because sometimes the pressure of a full barrel can cause a lot of water to come out that you don't want. You get a little bit more control of the water this way. So first, we're gonna go ahead and mix the grass red violet. Be one drop of the cobalt violet. And one drop of the 28H Carmine. to mix that up. I'm going to use the what is lightest or most water added to it, least concentrated color. I'm going to add lots of water to it to the side and test that out. And that still looks very concentrated. So I'm going to pick some up and then just add it to the side here. With a bunch of water. Dab it off on my towel and then pick some up again and test it out. That looks a little bit more like what I'm looking for, but still a little bit under concentrated, a little bit too much water. Pick a bit more up, dab it off on my towel and test it out on my test strip. I think that looks about right. Now, color mixing, just adding the water can be complicated enough, so it's great as a beginner to be able to start with the formulas. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that paint and then I'm just going to add it to the petals and sepals to kind of add a highlight like you see in Set 5's image. And this again doesn't have to be exact, just add to the same general areas. brightens up the flower a little bit more and you'll be able to see this in your painting more than you would be able to see it in the step-by-step -step instructions. A little more vibrant. Printers can always pick up all the different colors. But it's so much better to have a painting. paint outside of the lines, don't worry, it's just going to add a little more character to your painting. Again, making it perfectly imperfect. If you do want to remove some paint, you can rub your finger while it's still wet, it's already dried, or take a Q-tip to it, we'll take a Q-tip and just dab it up gently. Clean off my brush. I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to move on to step six. Step six paint in the grass green and purple. So I'm going to go ahead and take some of this really dark fully concentrated grass green. Dab it off on my towel. Test it out to make sure it looks right still. It looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and pick some more up, dab it on my towel and start adding it in like I see in step six. So I'm adding this sparingly preserving some of the color underneath. And if you need to, you can always refer to your final reference image for that placement of color as well. I'm 
go ahead and clean up your brush. And I feel like this is not dark enough because we didn't have the yellow underneath it. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of this paint again. This is a medium dry color. I'm going to add that in there. A few other spots that I just feel like are a little too yellow. I'm just going to add it in. And feel free to do this to your own painting if you like, if you have the same issue. Go ahead and clean off brush. And I'm going to add in the dry dark grass purple. So that's this color here. We added in the beginning and tested out on my paper. And it looks a little bit too concentrated now. I think it might have gotten a little too dark. So as it dries, water evaporates and it gets a little darker. That looks a bit better. So I'm going to pick that up, dab it on my towel, and I'm just going to add it like I see in step six and my final reference image. a little too dark. I'm going to pick up, a, add a little bit more water, dab it on my towel and test it out one more time. Looks pretty good. A little bit too much water, dab it on my towel. I can move that water around a little bit. Pick up a little bit more, dab it on my towel. I don't want a bunch of water onto my paper. There you go, now it's behaving a little bit more like I wanted it to. Again, paint outside of the edges, that's okay, just redefine those edges later. It's not hitting down there as much, so it's going to be a little bit on the darker side. Okay, with these petals here, some of the light's not hitting on um, this part of the sepals and the petals, so the edges are going to be a little bit darker. Step seven, add ink lines. So I'll take the smallest tip micron, the 005 micron, this is black, and I'm going to go ahead and redraw the lines I transferred in step one, except for these lines on the petals and sepals, which are collectively called the tepals. And you can refer to either your transfer drawing or your final reference image replacement of those lines. Again, this is meant to be meditative and relaxing. So go ahead and put on a podcast or an audio book or listen to nature, some music, whatever you prefer, whatever's relaxing to you. And redraw the whole 
those lines. And you can redefine spaces as well. Look here, the paint. I decided I'd add this extra space here because the lines didn't transfer quite right. So that's going to be a little different from my transfer image, which is totally fine. And it's going to be a little different from my reference. And then the paint landed outside the sepal here. So I can either make that a little bit wider or I can draw right around over it and pretend it's not there at all. Just add a little bit more style to my painting. You can get a bit more unique. The same thing here, I can keep this on the inside or the outside. And there I decided to make that sepal a little bit wider, which is totally fine. This is just a sketch, it doesn't need to be exact. Let's go ahead and go throughout and redraw all those lines. reference image and your step seven's image to figure out where those lines might go. And this is your sketch, so you want something to be a little bit thicker, go ahead and do that. Just make sure you have some line variation. It really will help the image just pop off the page. I'm going to use the 08 micron, which is the thickest of the microns, to just thicken some lines throughout and parts of the seed capsules here and to fill in the common name. Now, this pen does tend to smudge while it's still wet, so make sure you don't run your hand over it while it's wet. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun, had a chance to relax a little. Next, we have a few things you can do with this painting. Punch holes in it and add it to your sketchbook. Frame it, gift it, maybe send it in the mail to a friend to brighten their day. Also, make sure to share it with us. We'd love to see it. Use the hashtag NatureCreateArt to have it featured on our social media or share it on our Facebook banner page. If you have any questions or like to see a plant or animal featured in a future lesson, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you again for joining me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and shop plus and at naturesketchfree.com.